Welcome to this special holiday edition of Green Vision. And I'm going to show you how today to uh, make about 30 of these little gingerbread houses. And uh, it's going to save you a bundle of money for Christmas time, you know. It's going to make a lot of children very happy. Nobody's going to trip over some toy that nobody's interested in anymore. And so let's uh, get started. And um, just put on my cooking duds. Now that I'm a uh, lunch lady, as, as I am, uh, five days a week in the Portland schools, I have um, access to all sorts of cooking lore, and uh, of course, I have to uh, dress the part, so that's uh, what we're doing right here. All right, so we're going to make gingerbread houses for uh, children, adults, anybody that are going to be just like uh, this little fella right here. And... Um, it's, uh, you, you can see that it's, it, there's not much to it, you know? It doesn't really weigh much. And uh, I made some cutters for myself that I'll make for you too if you uh, want to do that. But uh, let's, uh, let's get started with the ingredients. So we've got the ingredients right, uh, I got all the ingredients arrayed here on the counter next to my uh, trusty toaster oven. And you can do this in a toaster oven, so you don't need to have uh, an elaborate kitchen. There's going to be uh, half a cup of sugar in there and uh, six tablespoons of margarine. I'm using uh, Land O'Lakes margarine. I like it. And um, let's see, we're going to have, uh, this is a baking soda. There's a teaspoon of all these things. Baking soda, uh, salt, cinnamon, ginger, uh, ground cloves, powder, and nutmeg. And then there's a half a cup of molasses. I use grandma's and uh, four cups of uh, King Arthur's uh, or any kind of uh, white. Un I like unbleached flour, so that's what I use. So that's the ingredients in this recipe. And what we'll do is uh, uh, everything uh, that's required. Um, this is a, a cup of molasses here, and I'm going to put that in my microwave oven to boil. And you boil that so that um, so that you get a nice warm dough, which is you know soft and easy to and pliable, and also it's going to melt the uh, margarine, which is the shortening of this recipe. So I'll throw it in the microwave and boil for about uh, three minutes. And in the meantime, we'll put together the uh, dry ingredients. You got four cups of flour. So let me grab uh, four cups of flour. This uh, is a cup. This. Um, scoop to the third one, fourth one. Now if you were going to do this in the ordinary way, you'd save the fourth one and not uh, blend it in now and use it to, to uh, roll out dough, but uh, I'm going to show you a way to roll out dough without flour and uh, you, know, you don't need that. So then you add the dry ingredients to that. So there's a teaspoon of each of these items right here, and I got my teaspoon right there. This is ginger. I was not real careful about how much of a teaspoon, you know, it's a little bit, maybe a little bit over. Cinnamon, I like cinnamon. Throw that in there, what time we start? And then uh, clove, kind of uh, spicy tasting, so I won't overdo it with the clove. Nutmeg. And, uh, and then baking soda is the uh, leavening in this to uh, make it get kind of puffy. Baking soda. And then flour, I mean uh, salt, a teaspoon of salt. Okay, so that's all those ingredients, and I just uh, get those out of my way. And so right now you got the. Um, let's just see if that molasses is boiling yet. Yeah, it is. Just boiling. Okay, so that makes it real thin. You know, it'll pour. And I take this. Um, hey, look at the noise there. Six tablespoons of this. And it usually says on the side how many. There's a little thing on the side there on the paper that tells you how much it is. Six tablespoons. And 
throw it in there. And then uh, I didn't show the milk because I didn't have to take it out of the refrigerator. But there it is. It gets three, three tablespoons of milk in this. And I think I'll wait until my margarine um, has uh, melted down. Break it up a little bit. And then we'll mi mix up these dry ingredients here for when we throw in the wet stuff. Just gonna stir that up over here so that if it spills, it goes into the mix. Good, and I have a half a cup of sugar ready to go in this in this little sugar ball here, so I'll throw that in there. Turns into a kind of a nice. This is all the liquid ingredients along with the Okay, that's going in. And then we got about three tablespoons of milk to throw in. Uh, there's one, two, three tablespoons right there. If it's a little bit moist or uh, or a little bit dry, that's not a, a terrible thing. It doesn't really hurt this this recipe. So then you mix it up. until it, it's going to form a dough, finally. You need to add a little flour to make it the right consistency. That's okay, too. So let me get it out of the whisk here and uh, put it in with my rubber spatula. My favorite. This is my favorite kitchen tool, the rubber spatula. So, you know, you're working that together and uh, it makes a nice, after a while, it's going to make a nice dough. Uh, almost the consistency of bread dough. And you'll be able to, uh, you know, handle it. And you have to be able to do that. And I'm not going to do that a whole process because I have dough uh, ready to go. Okay, so I have some dough that, that I made and you get, you end up with a brick about um, half again that size. and. You know, I can actually crush it in one hand. So now I'm going to show you how to roll this uh, gingerbread dough. Uh, and this is just basically what I have in the bowl there, but mixed together. Okay, I'm going to show you how to roll it out without flour. <clears throat> so what I've got here is a piece of uh, plastic that is really uh, the bag of a um, Cheerios, big Cheerios box. So, you know, the bag that the Cheerios comes in is a very, very durable plastic. You hate like hell to throw it away, but of course that's what you do. And uh, this uh, is a way not to throw one of them away because you can use it. Okay, so this is dough that, that is uh, exactly the same as what I prepared here, except totally mixed up. I haven't uh, floured it. I'm putting it down on a piece of plastic. And let me get this out of the way. And I'm going to uh, roll it out under the plastic, just like that, little by little. And I peel off the plastic every so often on both sides so that it doesn't uh, get stuck. Little by little, roll it out. I want to get it uh, pretty thin. Now you can see that that's pretty thin right there. I want to get it to about the thinness of maybe a penny, you know, a nickel, something like that. But of course, the thinner you roll it out, the more houses you get. You know, if you um, if you make thick ones, then you won't get quite so many pieces. You won't be able to make so many houses. And it's pretty thin, as you can see with the one that we got here. You can see how thin that dough is. It doesn't rise very much. So here we got some dough, about a, a golf ball size piece we started with, and we rolled it out into something like that. And what I do next with it is to put it on a piece of wax paper. Okay, so let's just go over what we did. We boiled uh, a half a cup of a cup of molasses, and we stirred in um, six tablespoons of margarine and a half a cup of sugar and um, uh, three tablespoons of milk. And then uh, in another, in a bowl, we put uh, flour, salt, and all these spices 
a teaspoon of each. I'm not. I'm sorry. Not we have put uh, four tape, four cups of flour, and then a teaspoon of each of salt and uh, four spices: cinnamon, nutmeg, ginger, and clove. Baking soda, and uh, salt. We mix those together, and then we threw in the liquid ingredients, which was the uh, sugar and molasses. And then uh, we uh, needed that we put them together like this. You can knead them, and you can turn this out into a plastic bag and knead it until it's the right consistency or you can do it with a spatula. I, I like to knead it in a plastic bag. And then we uh, rolled out the dough and uh, now we're going to cut it. So what I have here are these uh, little cutters that I made out of, um, well you can see what I made them out of, uh, olive oil tin, you know. And so I have uh, these five cutters that I use and then a couple of uh, other items. This is the uh, end of a uh, marking pen. This is a florist thing. This is just a soda straw. And uh, this is the top of, uh, what is it? Oh, Progresso breadcrumbs. Okay. I'm going to do, I'm going to cut things with that. And, uh, you know, I, I, I took a piece of uh, tin and bent it into that shape. Now you could, if you, you were going to do this at home, as I assume you are going to do, you could make um, templates to cut around and lay them down on your dough and with either a razor blade or, you know, a, a paring knife, you could cut around that thing and make your pieces. Now I have uh, three pieces here. This is, a, this is a front or back and a side and I made it so that it'll fit on the side like that. And then a roof, you know, and you'd make two roofs and two sides and a front and a back. And then you'd have your house and you make them in any size you want. And if you design them right, well, they'll fit, to fit together and you'll be able to make a house out of it. But I'm going to use the cutters. And, you know, these cutters, uh, I made these for myself. I'll make you a set of these cutters if you like. You know, you send me uh, $10 and I'll send you a set of cutters, you know, postpaid. If you uh, send me $20, I send you th uh, this video and a set of cutters. And if I had the sham wow guy here to do this promotion, you know, you would, I would say, hey, and you never saw nothing like this in your life. You can't believe this. I'm, I roll it out. No flour. Not a, not even a drop of. Look at this. No mess. Oh, I made a mess, you know. But anyways, I'm not him. But the sham wow guy, I'm going to get him to do the commercial for this. Okay. So we're going to cut with these cutters, and I'll make a set of these cutters so that you can make this uh, thing. And I press them down there like that. I see I have a piece of... Uh, You'll, you'll see why that got left there from the last uh, execution. <clears throat> so there's a front and a back. There's a, uh, a roof. And another roof. And then we'll make a couple of sides. There's a side. And another side. And we'll make a, a Christmas tree. Okay, so there's the Christmas tree. There. No, it goes the other way. Okay, Christmas tree. And then we'll take the paring knife and we'll pull all the waste off. And the good thing about this, doing this without flour, is that you can, you know, reuse, just roll it out again and reuse it. it does, it's not drying, you know, it's the same consistency as it was. Maybe a little bit of drying from being exposed to the air. But you can see I'm pulling those off of there. I see my Christmas tree is disappeared, but that's all right. We get it back again. So there's the Christmas tree. So those items. Now, <clears throat> if you have a really wet dough, then they're going to be kind of stuck to the uh, wax paper. And uh, we have a cure for that. So then I'm going to uh, cut a door out of the front. made myself a door cutter. And I'm going to cut a couple of windows here in the, in the front. This is at the top of a marking pen, as I mentioned. I'll make a little window up there. And then in the back, we'll put a window at the top and a couple of windows down below. And then uh, on the sides, a few windows over there. Take our paring knife to pull out. Christmas tree, oh, let's, uh, let's, put a couple, let's put a light on the Christmas tree, okay, right in the middle there. And we'll put a window in the door right at the top with our straw. <clears throat> Okay, so these are uh, the various pieces. Now, if they were stuck to this uh, wax paper because they were kind of moist, then you would put them in the freezer, and when you pull them out of the freezer, which I'm just about to do, you'd pull them out of the freezer, because I have some, just happened to have some that are frozen, then you could, um, 
easily separate them from the uh, from the wax paper. Okay, so that's that's the one of the tricks is to put them in the freezer. And I did that. And these won't really have to be in the freezer because they're not really sticking. But I, you know, if it was the right weather, uh, then they might do that. And this right here is all uh, good stuff. Going to be used again later. It's still uh, perfectly okay to use. So now we've got uh, these items here. The next thing we're going to do is to uh, get them ready to bake. Let's see. Um, I've got here some foil. Okay. So I now I made these pieces of foil the size that you need if you're using doing this in the toaster oven because that's the way we're going to do it and you know it can be done that way and uh, you, you grease the foil so you get uh, some of that uh, margarine that I had here I'm just going to come around this way get some of that margarine that I had and just uh, lay it on the foil there's the and so we'll lay it on the foil like that so that nothing will stick okay so let's uh, let's take a little break and uh, we'll be back we'll be back shortly with this uh, recipe I'm going to just uh, clean up a little bit and uh, so that we can go on to the next stage of the baking and uh, you know putting these things together okay We'll be right back with Green Vision and this special edition. With Green Vision, and we have this uh, special holiday edition in which we're making uh, gingerbread houses. And as I mentioned, you can make like 30 of them out of this recipe that I've got. Uh, now the, we've uh, cut uh, pieces, and I've laid them out on uh, greased foil. Okay, and I've got two of them going here. I'm just cutting the uh, another uh, base. Okay, because this is what it sits on. I'm using that Progresso uh, uh, breadcrumb lid, and uh, just to cut out another base okay and some I see I see I had a little break in it but that was okay because uh, this is bigger than it needs to be for her um, the base of this thing and then take this and of course this is all going to be used again later so now what we have is uh, laid out here our uh, a front and a back now if you were doing this in production the way that uh, I do every Christmas time you would lay out a whole bunch of fronts and a whole bunch of backs and a whole bunch of, of uh, sides and so forth but I'm not going to do that uh, because we're making basically making one to show you how to do it. Okay, so the next thing is uh, decorating uh, these pieces. And the front is the main one. And uh, you could decorate it, uh, let's, this is a, uh, a nut. Okay, so nuts are nice. Let's put a nut on the back over here and a piece of nut over here on the back. Okay, and then I got a couple of raisins here. Raisins are nice. I use raisins for the um, for the uh, walk, okay. So for the front walk, a couple of a couple of raisins, kind of flattened out. And uh, now for the front of the house, let's um, just cut a couple of a couple of lights, okay, along the top here, just by cutting them out with the straw, okay. One, we'll make uh, four lights, okay. So this is you know Christmas lights on this house. Okay, so now, now I'm going to show you something that, uh, as far as I know, nobody else does. Something that I uh, discovered some years ago. These are lifesavers, <clears throat> hard candy, and uh, you know they melt in the oven. They melt in the in the uh, toaster oven, down into let's get let's get this one here down into almost a glass-like thing, and you can break them up with a knife like that, and take off slices of them. I'll take off a few slices smaller pieces and 
you know, you get, you kind of get the hang of how to cut them. But I'm, I'm using a paring knife. You can use a razor blade, and different sizes will fill different holes. So let's say that I put a one of those right there like that, and uh, let's. Jeez, boy, boy, I'll tell you what, one of the best in the business at making a mess, but that's all right because. Uh, Let's put a green one in the front window there. And uh, let's take a couple of small pieces for these uh, Christmas lights across the top. And uh, let's see, let's put one in the uh, right there. A couple of small pieces in there. And that's going to come out as uh, stained glass when. Uh, when it's done. Hard to believe, but it really does. And let's see, what else do we got? Um, oh yeah, let's get a gumdrop. Let's get a green gumdrop here. And just for the heck of it, we'll put a, uh, cut the end off like that. And we'll put a wreath on the, on the front door. Okay, so, and I want another raisin here for the front walk. Yeah, let's put a raisin on the front walk. Okay, we'll go around this way. So here's the uh, toaster. I'm going to um, set it for uh, 325, and uh, yeah, well, get it, get it started. So we've got uh, these fellows are ready to go. Now I'm going to uh, just change change my position a little bit, and I'm bringing these over this way. So, and, they, and they, these are, you know, <laughs> I mean, you can't smell them from where you are, but when you do this at, uh, you know, Christmas time or Thanksgiving time or whenever you're doing it, um, they, it makes the whole kitchen, you know, smell like these uh, four spices and the molasses. It really is a, it, it's a, every time you do it, and it's really only good to do in the wintertime because uh, they get a little bit uh, soggy in, um, in uh, moist weather, you know, today's a rainy day here in Connecticut, and um, uh, they don't hold up that well. If you make them small enough, they hold up well enough. But if you were going to make something big, and I've done some fairly big projects, you know, <laughs> there's a house down the street that I copied in gingerbread one year. I did a, a Tiffany lamp one year, and uh, it was a great fun. I had the stained glass in there, and it didn't hold up because it was a, a warm Christmas, and uh, things wouldn't hold together. So anyway, we got uh, this, and what I'm doing is I'm slipping it off the table onto a cookie sheet held upside down, okay? And that makes it lie flat, and I'm uh, putting it in the microwave. I'm going to give it uh, five minutes. We'll see how it does with, five, not microwave, but uh, five minutes in the toaster oven. And in the meantime now, we'll uh, mix together some of our uh, cement, okay? What holds this together? And all it is is uh, sugar and water. Now you don't, you can use, you don't have to use sugar and water. <clears throat> you could use marshmallow fluff. Marshmallow fluff flows a little bit, and so it's uh, not that, not maybe not the best thing to work with, but you know it's right there, it's ready to go, and you can use that. Uh, you could use instead of uh, sugar and water, you could use sugar and um, egg white, and that makes a very hard and sticky uh, cement. But so there's a very heaping teaspoon and another very heaping uh, teaspoon of this uh, confectioner's sugar. And I'm going to put in just a few drops, just a few drops of water, just a few drops. And gradually mix them in there because if you put in too much it gets too thin too quick. Okay, so we're Mixing it up a little bit at a time, a few drops of water at a time until we get the consistency we want, which is uh, not not uh, flowing, but you know uh, at least a mass, all in all in a mass, and that's what we're making here. Okay, so here, take a look at that. That's that's about the uh, 
consistency that we're looking for. That's not as smooth as you might like it. And you can apply this stuff um, with a knife if you want, or you can put it into a little plastic bag and cut a, you know, cut a corner off and squeeze it out into a, into a, uh, a bead. I, I've done, uh, I've gone a little bit beyond that. I took a toothpaste tube and cut the end off, uh, cut the end off, open it up, and pour this stuff in there or knife it in there. And I put a clip on it to hold it shut. And then, I, then you, you make a hole in the, in the uh, cap of the toothpaste tube. In my case, I put a little bit of a, uh, a tube on there and, and I can squeeze this stuff out in a bead. Okay, so I have some, I have some that I made that are ready to assemble. And so we're going to assemble while the other ones are, are cooking, okay? We're going to assemble. Let's get that stuff out of the way. <clears throat> and we're going to assemble one of these little fellows here. We're going to need um, our gumdrops. Let's take a few gumdrops. And we'll start, uh, let's, I want red, at least one red. Okay, so let's start, uh, let me get out my pieces. These are pieces that I baked the other day. There's a base and uh, a tree. These are the first two things that we need. The uh, Christmas tree goes in, you know, you don't push push it in through the door, you put it in first. So that's what we're doing. So I'm taking a gumdrop and I'm just uh, kind of cutting some pieces out. Gumdrop is pretty sticky and it'll stick to the back of this tree pretty nicely so it makes a little, uh, you know, stand. And so I'm going to put the Christmas tree right in like that. Okay, I could actually, I could glue it in, but I, you know, you don't really need to. But I'm gonna, I'll, I'll put a little bit of my cement in there just to, just to firm it up. So there's a little cement behind it. So there's the Christmas tree sitting in the living room, okay, which I haven't installed yet, and the little walk out front there, okay. Push them over a little bit there. That's good. And now we're going to uh, assemble the um, two roof pieces and the front, okay? So this is the front piece right here. And this is what I made the other day. I put a little uh, dot in there. And there's uh, colored candy in there. It's, it's not uh, very colorful. But um, I think the Lifesaver is gonna come out a little bit more colorful. So we take a couple of roof pieces like this, okay? And line them up together like that. And we got our front piece. And I get my uh, toothpaste thing here. And I put a bead right along there like that and then I stick the other roof piece to it okay then I can lay it down like that and I take my uh, front and put the uh, stuff on there and it's a little bit pliable because of the, like I say it's got it's wet weather and put it in there and there's the uh, the two roof pieces in front, okay, ready to go. When I get my back, I have a back here that's ready to go. It's got a stained glass window in it too. I don't know, maybe you can see that. And I'll do that to it. So just a little bead. And like I said, you could have done this with the knife if you wanted to, just lay it on there. And then put that in between the roof pieces. Then I'll get my two sides and uh, give them some cement. Lay them in. This is a this this should be rigid. This stuff, but it isn't because of the weather. And uh, so, but we're, we can make it anyway. But it would be it would be brittle like a uh, ginger snap, you know. And uh, when it comes out of the oven, it will be the ones that are coming out. But uh, this one isn't. Okay, so there it is. You can see it's upside. It's an upside down uh, specimen of the house. And at this point, you can actually hold it in your hand and uh, put a little bit of this. That was our ours being done after five minutes in the toaster oven at uh, 325. Okay, so now. Let's just, uh, we're going to lay that right down there. 
Okay, so it's sitting there, and then we'll take a, uh, oh, let's take a red one. Okay, and we'll take a yellow one. Let's turn it the other way around. Okay, cut it in half. Okay, and then I get a door. I got a door that's ready to go here. stuff on there. There's the door. And now let's put a chimney on it and uh, just kind of cut out uh, either side there. A little bit of cement. Okay, there's the chimney. And uh, let's see, I want to um, put some snow, of course. You want snow on there. You can see it's collapsing a little bit, and that, that's because of the uh, weather. But um, in ordinary circumstances, it wouldn't be doing that. So you put, put the snow in a, uh, put the confectioner sugar in a fine strainer, and then uh, and stir it around, hit it with a spoon like that. And you got yourself a little uh, subdivision here, okay? There's number number two. And let's just see what uh, how we did here. So there they are, the little neighbors. And let's see how we did in the oven. Well, that five minutes was a little long, and so I see that I burned my dough, and, and that can happen to you. But um, in any case, uh, let's just have a look here. Okay, so what we would do, we would actually pull that out with the uh, tongs. Pull that out with a tong. Hello, don't go there. Okay, so, so you, you'd, you'd pull it out. I didn't quite get to this in time, and I should have checked. And lay it on the table so that it uh, is flat, and then let it cool like that. And you can see the uh, the candy melted very nicely, but we did we did burn this, and it's, that doesn't taste good when it's burned. And so, like four minutes at 325, okay, uh, on this particular day. So in a, in a minute, it'll be uh, cool enough to uh, separate. Got my special separator from the foil, and you can see it comes up pretty easy. And so it it is burned, of course, but uh, that's okay because we. Made a good one. And, and you, you can see lifesavers come out real nice in there. Okay, they're, they're just beautiful uh, to make that stained glass. So that's, uh, that's gingerbread houses, and don't burn yours, okay? And I'll be back with uh, Green Vision on a, another occasion. By the way, to uh, buy the cutters, you can send um, $10 to Steve Fournier, 74 Tremont Street, Hartford, Connecticut, 06105, or you can go on the internet to www.step4.com slash ginger. And, or you can just go to step4.com and click on the gingerbread house and uh, you can use your credit card to uh, pay uh, $10 for the cutters or $20 for the cutters and uh, this video. And thanks to uh, hpatv.com, that's accesstv.org, for putting this production together. I'm Steve Fournier and I'll be back again soon.